what's the dynamic uh, no, like? No, I, so I help out, obviously. <laughs> I, I probably know him better than anyone, yeah. and especially his game style and, and how he likes to go about it. Um, but yeah, yeah, look, I'm extremely happy. Um, my level is in a good spot coming into Melbourne. I've had a good 2024. It's been very very good to me, so hopefully I can keep it going. It's always great to hear you know, his experiences, because you know, he's actually experienced everything there is on a tennis court. So, you know, a couple of things here and there to, to learn for myself, you know. How did Alex de Menor do the unthinkable? Will he be the next world number one? Have you ever wondered if someone could leap over a mountain in a single jump? That's the kind of awe Alex de Menor is sparking in the tennis industry. Today, we're diving into the incredible journey of this rising star. Could he be the one to take the throne as the world number one? Let's find out exactly how Alex de Menor did the unthinkable. But first, quiz time. What is the nickname of Alex de Menor and what does it signify? Is it A, the Minotaur, B, the Monster, C, the Demon, D, the Devil? The correct answer will be revealed at the end of the video, so stay tuned. And hey, don't be shy, hit us up with your guesses in the comments. We'll reply to as many of them as we can. And as always, if this video serves up some tennis joy, bolly that like button and backhand a subscribe for more ace-worthy content like this. Yeah, look, I'm extremely happy. Um, my level is in a good spot coming into Melbourne. I've had a good 2024. It's been very, very good to me, so hopefully I can keep it going. And On January 10th, a remarkable tennis match took place at the Australian Open charity event where Alex de Menor, now a top 10 player, faced Carlos Alcaraz. This match was a display of de Menor's growing dominance in the sport. What does this victory mean for de Menor's future? Could this be the start of an era where he becomes a household name in tennis? Alex de Menor, filled with confidence, said after the match, the sky is the limit. He had a reason to be optimistic, having just secured his fourth major victory against top 10 players in merely 10 days. This impressive feat came as he won 6-4, 5-7, 10-3 against Alcaraz. The match, although unofficial, was crucial for de Menor. The Rod Laver Arena was packed with fans who witnessed de Menor's skill and determination. I'm extremely happy. My level is in a good spot coming into Melbourne. 2024 has been very good to me. Hopefully I can keep it going, he shared, reflecting on his recent success. Alcaraz, a force to be reckoned with and a champion of both the US Open and Wimbledon, made a strong comeback after a two-month break. This was the first match in Australia since 2022, and he started it with a bang. He showed his class with a backhand slice and a booming forehand, giving him an early lead. However, de Menor, just 24 years old, was not deterred. He has been in exceptional form, having beaten players like Taylor Fritz, Novak Djokovic, and Alexander Zverev recently. This run of victories has de Menor dreaming big of winning his first Grand Slam. We'll just have to wait and see. I heard a pretty good quote. How big would you dream if you knew you couldn't fail? That's been the motto. I'm pushing myself every day, and hopefully, the sky's the limit. De Menor said, showing his ambition and the drive that fuels him. Quick side note here, I hope you haven't forgotten about our trivia question. Make sure to keep watching, the answer will be revealed at the end. And hint, the answer is not D, the devil. Leighton Hewitt, De Menor's coach during the United Cup, spoke about the significance of the match, especially with the Australian Open on the horizon. He pointed out the differences in court surfaces between Sydney and Melbourne, noting, it's probably a little bit quicker than Sydney here at the moment. So that's kind of what he's getting to feel out here tonight. This insight reveals the strategic thinking behind each match, as players adapt to different conditions. Hewitt further commented, you'd imagine he's going to play quite a few matches. Hopefully he can go deep in this tournament on this particular court and surface. Significantly, the series of matches, including this one, served a noble cause. The proceeds will go to various children's charities through the Australian Tennis Foundation, aiming to help 5,000 children from disadvantaged backgrounds play tennis in 2024. This blend of high-level competition and philanthropy adds a heartwarming dimension to the event, don't you think? As the Australian Open approaches, the tennis world watches with keen interest. Will Alex de Menor use his recent form to make a significant impact? As for Carlos Alcaraz, this match might have ended in a loss, but it also marks the start of his journey in the 2024 season. Always great to hear, you know, his experiences, you know, because he's actually experienced everything there is on a tennis court. So, you know, 
couple of things here and there to, to learn for myself, you know. OK, so we know that Alex de Menor has been doing very well recently. But the question is, how? What are his secrets? Well, to put it simply, mental strength and training habits. De Menor focused on building his physique, working with his trainer Emilio Paveda to gain muscle, going from about 69 kilograms to 76 kilograms. This was essential for playing more aggressively and preventing injuries. His mental approach to tennis also played a big role. Playing against top-ranked players with confidence, especially with the support of the home crowd in tournaments like the Australian Open, gave him a psychological advantage. His enjoyment and excitement in playing, particularly in front of his Sydney audience, have been key to his success. He emphasized being tough in crucial moments and finding solutions during matches. His passion for tennis is clear in his commitment to improve, even when results weren't immediate. He believes in overcoming challenges, showing his resilience and determination. And how can you expect to beat a player with that kind of mindset? And what about his future prospects? How do they look for him? Well, de Menu's career is promising. His entry into the top 10 at Pepperstone ATP rankings marks a significant achievement, his highest career position. This was helped by his performance at the United Cup, where, as mentioned, he beat three top 10 players, Taylor Fritz, Novak Djokovic, and Alexander Zverev, in just six days. His victory over Zverev was particularly special, making him the first Australian man to reach the top 10 in over 17 years since Leighton Hewitt in 2006. He's the 11th Australian to reach this level in ATP ranking history. Looking back at his 2023 season, he won his first ATP 500 title in Acapulco and reached his first Masters 1000 final in Canada, making it his best season so far. These achievements have set a solid foundation for his future in tennis. In 2024, he seems very motivated and in excellent form, as seen in his recent games. His next major challenge is the Australian Open, where he is the 10th seed. Having reached the fourth round in 2022 and 2023, he aims to go further this time. He's excited about playing at the Australian Open, acknowledging the home crowd's support as a big advantage. In tennis, every match is a story, and the Australian Open is where new chapters are written. For players like De Manur and Alcaraz, it's an opportunity to showcase their talent, determination, and perhaps write their own historic moments. The stage is set, and the world is watching. Now let's circle back to our trivia question of what is the nickname of Alex de Manur and what does it signify? Well, here's the answer. Alex de Manur is nicknamed the Demon because of his intense playing style on the court. De Manur has embraced this nickname as it aligns well with his aggressive and spirited playing style. It highlights his dedication to playing at his best and his reputation as a persistent and challenging opponent. And it sounds pretty cool to me. And that, my friends, is game, set, and match for this episode of Glam Slam Tennis. Thanks for watching, and make sure to take a peek to your left for another intriguing video you're sure to love. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you never miss a moment of the action and what we have in store. Until next time, stay fabulous and ace those serves. I still think I was quicker, but uh, he, he thinks he's one of the quickest guys out there, but I know I've got a bit slower over the last 20 years, but I still uh, reckon I might have had him covered.